All right, y'all, today we are talking about closure, not just your normal closure where, you know, you break up and you're trying to figure out what closure. We're talking about closure in regards to what about the issues, the conflicts you have. Do men and women deal with them differently? Hey, let's figure it out. Let's talk about it. Thank you for tuning in. We are Tristan and Michael, and you are listening to Fused Transparent Conversations for Marriage, Family, and Relationships. We invite you to join us as we discuss topics that are thought about but not talked about. So tell your friends and family to check us out. And for more content and resources, head on over to our website, fusedmarriages.com. What is going on? Hey. I'm trying to hold a little note. Oh, okay. That's what that was. No, I wouldn't know. That was just me you know, doing something. Okay. Uh, I was just trying something, you know what I mean? Trying hey, something different. That's, all, that's all, the only way you'll know if it works. Did yeah. it work? It's 2023. 2023. Uh, you got to try something. Try something new. Try something new. Message of the day. Yeah. So something that people might need to try new um, is something we're talking about in our conversation today. So today we're we're diving into conversations about closure. What is it? What does it mean? How do you know when you've accomplished it? What does it feel like when you haven't? All of that. So um, I want to toss the ball to you to kind of get us started because this is a point of contention in a lot of relationships. Yeah, you don't know so, laugh. I'm laughing for a whole different reason, but yeah. Okay. It's okay, though. I'm going to talk about it, though. It's fine. Okay. We'll get into it. No, no. I was, I was laughing. You were saying, like, it is a whole contention because, I mean, closure is different between men and women, we believe. Yeah. Right. Mm. That's typically talking about closure. You're talking about closure and, like, relationships uh-huh. and, like, we, you know, I'm splitting up, we, you splitting up, and we trying to figure out, and they, per- somebody wants an explanation, the other person may not, typically the guy. Okay. Does not need an explanation. Okay. Typically the female does, and we generally speaking here. Generally. Generally speaking, maybe some guys may want to have that, but generally speaking, I think it's say most females want an explanation. Okay. Or to kind of close out whatever the issue is yeah if the relationship went south they want to close it out okay right in a way that so they can kind of move on okay guys move on differently right but i want to expand that conversation a little bit Mm -hmm. because i think we look at disagreements differently too oh absolutely where we don't necessarily have to get generally speaking men don't have to get to the bottom of it and be okay with it you know what I mean? So the idea that, you know, we, we may have a disagreement <laughs> could come into something that we may have to kind of like, you know, in the way say, hey, you know, I disagree with this situation. You want to understand why this, that, and the other. And God, like, okay, I'm good. You know what? We, we disagree. We agree just to disagree. And most of us as guys are okay with that. And maybe that's true. I don't know. Maybe, fellas, I, that's how I operate. A lot of my friends may operate like that. Family members that are males kind of like, you know what? We don't have to get to the bottom of it. What do you think? <laughs> you alright you all out all right do CPR on you yeah. <laughs> honey you got the CPR hey y'all I don't know what's going on but like yeah this, like, this she, conversation got me all choked up you all choked up see my words go that deep to you like that to the core to the core <laughs> you need me to keep talking see, I can... okay <clears throat> okay get my life together okay Um. yeah I think that closure in in the context of like a disagreement mm-hmm. can be really challenging because yeah. I think both people really do want to move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on, girl. Um, but closure in the context of conversation can be really challenging because I think you do want to move on from it. Like you obviously want to kind of restore. Mm-hmm. And I think what, depending on the person, what you need can be mm-hmm. can be critical to the ability. To kind of just skate past. So like like we can use ourselves as an example. Yeah, what you got? So for me, and maybe this is some of y'all out there too, as my voice is kind of coming back. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, but to me, what I need is I need to talk it out. Mm-hmm. Like I need to know what went wrong, why it went wrong, what we need to do. And you don't need the same thing. Like you're like, okay, it's over. Let's move on. Right. I don't know if that's the same with like all men relationships. Yeah, I'm weak. <laughs> you're weak. It's okay. I, I mean, hey, when you're weak, I, I can carry you. I can, you know, I can carry the situation. If Listen, you, you I don't know. Me. See, we start talking about closure, and then yeah. look, I'm, you know, old folks say that's the devil. That's the devil trying to stop me. But yeah, 
Okay, it's Or the back. truth. Sometimes the truth won't let you speak up either. I don't know. Depends where you at on it. <laughs> you dig into that because I know, at least for me, what I need, like I said, is I really need a conversation. I really need for there to be like, like real connection to restore that. And I've said this before. For me, there has to be, if I'm offended, apology. Like you can't just move on. Like, oh, okay, well, nothing... You know, mm-hmm. nothing's mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. Um, let's just go out to eat. Although I will say food helps every situation. But tell me what your thoughts are. Is that common for men, the need for apology, the need to kind of dissect it? Or if that's not your experience, maybe there are some women out there who say, no, I just ready, rather shut the door. But I like for things to be sealed, for them to be tied up, for just so that you're not continuing down that same road like you're not having the same argument in another situation because I think that's what happens is that okay we just saw this we didn't resolve it we don't know why it happened we don't know what the lack of communication was we don't know where the offense was and so two days later we're having the same argument because we never really got resolution what are your thoughts yeah I mean I I did some reading I was trying to figure out right because I think the idea that how we handle, we as men, that is, handle conflict are very different from how women handle conflict. And you can kind of go in the way, and I got some information, I'm going to read some quotes I want to kind of go through, but like just in the idea of when women get into it, y'all get into it, right? And like oftentimes you start off with little kids, right? Where, you know, girls are playing, I don't like her, she don't like me. Boys don't really go through that. Don't go through like, you know what, that whole out of he don't like me, he don't like like we don't we don't go through that type of situation. We end up, you know what, they over there, I'm over here, cool. At that. And that's it. We ain't gotta figure out why. We ain't we ain't friends or nothing. Just you know what? Okay, they over there, I'm over here. Females tend to like a lot of y'all tend to go to, to into the realm of He's got to stay. I don't know what I did. Is it something I got on? Is it my clothes? Is that a, is a learned habit? Is that an observed habit? Like how, like where does that start? Where does it start? So maybe let me go into the to the article, right? Okay. That, that, that I read. And I think it may help. And I'm uh, got to go with me down the journey. Hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll draw some color to what we what we trying to talk about. Okay. So I read, I read an article in the Harvard Gazette. Uh-huh. Okay. And I'll just read a few quotes out of here. It says, though men compete more aggressively, we can agree with that, right? In most cases. Though men compete more aggressively, they make peace more easily after afterwards, the study says. Okay. So the idea, they took it, they took this article, they looked at men, how men compete and how women compete. And the and the study kind of summed up to say, hey, even though men are more aggressive and like in the competition, they end up they end up making peace more quickly, more quick than 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 women did. Mm -hmm. And they basically observed men and women in competition and watch how they interacted afterwards. So what you're saying is in the sports realm, Mm -hmm. they did this experiment and they noticed that the sportsmanship post whatever the competition was, they seemed to come a, a, you know, closer. It wasn't like necessarily personal offenses. It was just for the objective of the game. Yes. So let's say it's an example. So, you know, two people boxing, Mm -hmm. right? Men, Men, two men boxing. They box, they box, you know, beating each other head in, literally. At the end of their boxing match, they noticed more men kind of congratulated, hugged, and like, man, good fight, this, that, and the other. Women box, they walking by each other like, man, I'm, I'm sorry, I ain't feeling you. We need, I need a minute. I need to, I need to get understanding why you, you do me like that, this, that, and the other. But we putting some some words in their mouth. But like, the idea is that women didn't get over it, didn't get over it, right? And I got. I'm gonna read this. This a few more of this. This kind of quotes in here. It says, "While men can be more aggressive," this is a quote from the Harvard Gazette. While men can be more aggressive and combative, a new a new study shows that from the tennis court to the boxing ring, modern equivalents to one on one conflict, comparing mm-hmm. conflict conflict, whether it's on the sports or just in in life, men are more likely than women to make peace with their competitors after the after competition ends. And there's another there's an important piece right here that I think that kind of maybe sums it up. At least we can talk about it. it there's this quote that says, male warrior hypothesis, right? Okay. And what that means is the notion that men broker good feelings after conflict to ensure they can call on allies to help defend the group in the future. Okay. So the, the idea is that us as men, we're kind of wired in a way, at least what this article is suggesting, in a way that, hey, even though we may go at it, we're not going to hold on to that 
conflict. Not hold grudges as long. We're not gonna hold it at all. Okay. At all. Maybe it's stretched a little bit. We're not gonna hold it. It's not gonna be something that's gonna linger in us. Okay. Women on the other hand, that lingers. I mean, hey, remember what you did last year? Remember what you did three I, years ago? Remember what you did five years ago? Guilty. Like, like I can no, I know. holding on to stuff. Okay, that's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm I'm going from the data standpoint, not you know maybe you don't do. I don't know if you. Oh, you weren't talking about me. Uh, I, I I'm just saying. I can tell you're lying. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so yeah, go ahead and talk about it, what you got. So I can. I mean, I would love to hear from people on yeah. this if this is your experience. But at least for me, I know that that's something that I personally have struggled with is holding grudges. Like even if I'm not like um, combative, knowing I remember what you did, you know. So I think that's interesting. So what is so based on that? Like how how does that affect the relationship? What so if I'm if I'm taking this just from my life experience and then from what data is, is showing, I think women hold grudges longer than men hold grudges, and I think that plays out in our relationships, right? And us as men, we really don't understand and don't get it. Like, why is she on my neck about this? And this happened last week, last month, last year, three years ago, five years ago, because we don't we're not wired to kind of hold on to grudges that way. We're saying, okay, we know what we want to, we want to, the issue happened. We have a conflict, but we want to get back to a common place for the better good, right? We're allies. We're on the same team. We wired that way. So we get frustrated, like missing the point maybe of even trying to get to a, a, a understanding of what the issue really is because we move past it faster than what you guys do. And it comes across as like, oh, I mean, he don't want to talk about it. In reality, it's just how he's wired. According to data, maybe real life, I've done it. People may out there may have done it as well. This men have kind of like gotten over an issue and maybe wanting to like, okay, hold on, we're on the same team. Let's say hey, we can talk about it, but we ain't got to have no animosity about talking about it. <coughs> I think voice gone. So you know what that means? <coughs> I means that means I get to talk more, y'all. Today, y'all get a y'all get a full show with Michael. Holds her because she has been made silent, at least you know on this topic because it may just be stinging a little bit. I don't know if it is or not. I don't know. That's not it. I don't know because hey, but <laughs> hey, the, hey, real life don't don't tell stories. Whatever's happening, listen, happening. I have been talking all day and it wasn't. They don't until. know that until right until this conversation, which is the real conversation. So the idea is that as I, as I was saying, so the idea is like us men, right? <laughs> Us men, thank you, Bray. Excuse you, by the way. I can get to you. Excuse me. Gotta get some water. Get up. This I got, is insane. I got, I got I the people. Have a lot to say on. This. I got the people. Evidently not. So, us men, we have been really. I think just we we we've, we've been villainized a little bit in a way. I'm not being serious about this. We've been villainized because it's the issues have been happening, and people are thinking, and women, our women are thinking like, hey, my dude, he don't want to resolve the issue. And oh, he's running away from the issue. He don't want to. He don't want to talk it out or talk about it. In reality, we not we not wired that way. We have we have this innate feeling of saying, "Hey, I want to I want to move past this so we can be allies and really conquer something greater than this issue." The issue is the issue. We can recognize that. Yes, we did fight. We could go into the to the to the boxing match, whatever have you. We did have a conflict. We're not denying that. But at the end of the conflict, we want to hug it out. And maybe a little more. You know, depends on what you know. Hopefully y'all married and all, but like we want to hug it out. Of course, right? We want to hug it out, but that's the truth. I'm going with the study, Harvard Gazette. That's a very powerful. So then, why article. do men shut down when we get into an argument? They're not. It seems that there's not necessarily um, a search for resolution. It's just the end, which is not the same. Because mm -hmm. something you can stop talking about something that doesn't mean that it's resolved. And sometimes I feel that it seems as though seeking hey why like the emotional connection and i'm not saying that you have to be emotional about it but really connecting beyond um what this argument is about maybe what how much more deep-seated it is why is that not an objective if men are really looking to the end of the conversation like man i just want to hug it out why would they shut down why wouldn't they you know really seek having conversation about it or being proactive because a lot of times at least the way that it's portrayed is that the woman is like we need to talk and da 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 da, da. and sometimes that happens sometimes it doesn't 
So where is that um, that sense of desire for closeness in um, beyond the physical, beyond like, hey, let's go, let's move on? That's a great question. And I can I can at least answer from the best of my ability what I think us men or myself kind of really process the, what the issues or at least how that plays out. And I think it plays out, at least for myself and maybe some of the guys I've talked to, is that the issue is not bigger than life. So there's an issue, right? Real issue, money issue, we didn't talk, I didn't tell you something, I was supposed to be bad communication, whatever it is, there is an issue. Okay. But that issue, at least in the man's mind, my mind, is not bigger than the life that we're trying to build and where we're trying to go to. Okay. Um, we can get a trap for one, because we have too many of those and all of a sudden, a lot of them become, we do yeah. become an issue. Yeah. But in our minds, when that issue happens, it's like, man, we can't move forward because of this is really the thinking that we go through, right? We want to, we want, we want to move forward at least from the standpoint. It's there's no animosity. I don't think we mind like talking it out. We don't mind that most of us don't. When you bring the animosity to it, we like why why we gotta have that with but the sometimes conversation. Sometimes that comes out because there seems to be a lack of compassion or concern. Mm. So if it starts at level one. And we're supposed to be discussing this thing and I feel blown off. I feel like like if you were to say to me, if we're just using us for an example, it's not that big a deal. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like telling somebody to calm down. Has anybody ever been told to calm down that they're like, oh, you're right. Let me calm down. That's the, like not ever in life ever. And it never will. If somebody tells me to calm down, it's 100 percent guarantee I'm about to. Like 30 times, <laughs> like, my, listen, when I get upset, my face starts turning red. Like, it doesn't turn red, but I feel it getting hot. You start coughing, too? It could happen. <laughs> so it's what you like, it's like, He's trying to be smart now. He trying to be smart. Now you can't edit out any of that coughing because <laughs> they're going to see it ratchet up. <laughs> ratchet um, up. But my palms start getting sweaty, like, for real. And so sometimes I, I wonder if mm -hmm. the lack of compassion on the front end mm -hmm. is what leads to... The explosion on the back end. So that's why there's like the need for closure really is the need for the, the pro working through the process. Mm -hmm. And I think personally that if it were addressed on the front end, if it was, hey, that really upset me versus like even the facial expression can be something like you tripping like that. Those kinds of things, instead of just saying like, what do you what do you mean? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. And I'm not saying you have to be all soft and cooing, but dismissive will absolutely lead to further conflict and a lack of closure or sh or somebody shutting down will lead to that same thing. So why then can we not address it at the top of a thing versus waiting until, you know, the house is on fire mm -hmm. before we kind of get where we need to go? Does that question make sense? That question make sense. It's a long question, but I'm trying to. I'm getting. To, I'm trying to get to. See, that's what happens when I'm not coughing. Like, <laughs> get a long question in there. <laughs> okay, but no, I think I understand what you what you're asking, and the idea is that you know I kind of mentioned about you know when men we kind of go through this, this this conflict and we wanna we wanna move past it. I, I don't want to say first of all. I'm, I think we should be. We're advocates for getting to the bottom of it. Absolutely. Right. We got to got to get to the bottom of it. Because that's ultimately is where you try to get, you know, your best growth and far relationships so we can kind of move forward. Mm -hmm. But if we take just the tendency of what men do, not the ones that are trying to manipulate situation and run from it, but the idea of like, hey, I want a kumbaya moment to in order for us to move on, not a, we're not still arguing, you know, if we're taking the data and looking at, you know, when women box, y'all ain't hugging it out and talking about, hey, y'all was a good fight. You know what? You got me in the jaw right there, but you know I mean, but guys, do, do, that. do that. But you see, men. No, look at boxing match and men. They I have to they watch literally, it. I'm gonna have to watch some. Okay, look football, right? Yeah. Everybody watches football, American football. In case we got some international people watching, American football, okay. rugby, whatever have you. After they, after they, after the matches, they're hugging each other, congratulating the man. Good, you know, good hit on me or this that, and the other. Hey, how's the family doing? Like everything is like done. Mm -hmm. Almost instantly, and what they're saying from a women's standpoint, y'all don't y'all don't operate that way. Even when it's like, in this case, we're, we're trying to we're trying to, play, to portray a conflict with maybe a real life relationship conflict, so it may not be one to one. But the tendency in a man, it, it's the same. 
we're at conflict. Why we got to have the animosity even afterwards? The issue happened. Why the animosity got to go along with it still? Do you think it has to do with emotional investment? And talking on the the male female marriage relationship or relation relation. Mm-hmm. Because we've talked before about men being potentially more cerebral and women being more emotional. So the emotional thing could last a little bit longer because I'm invested in a very internal, visceral, my feelings are there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the idea that somebody can kind of think about it and then put it in its compartment mm-hmm. to revisit it whenever versus this emotional thing kind of encompassing me. Now it's part of what I feel for whatever period of time. Do you think that that might have something to do with it? I think that may. And I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because I may, I don't want to get, it's, I think emo, I think women are emotional, men are emotional too. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Some, some, us as men, we maybe express it differently, but we are emotional. Yes, and yes. <laughs> very, emotional, very emotional. But I, I I'm don't, glad you said that. Yeah, I, I have to, I mean, you got to be honest with it, right? I mean, just to, hey, even myself, right? Because men emotional. will quick, fast, in a hurry say, oh, you're so emotional. Yeah. She's so emotional. Yeah. It's because the reason, because you know how we say that, right? Because we see y'all cry. And we always relate in tears to emotional, not our anger or frustration, which are equally just as emotional. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But besides that, I think us as men, we want to be able to say, is my woman on my side? Or is she against me? <laughs> and it makes it hard to say that you're on my side when you are giving this negative energy, I must say, or emotional animosity about it, it, it's about situation, but it comes across as it's about us. So, okay, explain. What do you mean? Say that. Say that again. The situation may have happened, right? Hey, I was supposed to pick the kids up at school. Okay. I forgot. The kids, I got a phone call. You get a phone call from the school saying, hey, the kids aren't picked up. And you giving it to me like, hey, I can't believe you picked the kids up at school. What happened? This and the other. You didn't communicate. You had to work late. This and the other. We're going to take that feedback is like not about the issue but it's a personal attack on us because nobody i wasn't trying as a dad leave my kids at school i wasn't trying to do that but your feedback may come across as like man you're attacking me like i wanted that to happen and i didn't so you're talking about the benefit of the doubt you're saying that a lot of these um closure why some relationships lack closure is because during the process there's not the benefit of the doubt you're not seeing the best in in your spouse you're not seeing the best. And it's the idea of that we're on the same team. We got the same uniform, same color on. We don't, I mean, you're on the same team and you practice it. Even if you got a, you have a bad practice, y'all go at you at that moment. But man, we like, we in, we, I ain't gonna say, we say we in the shower, showering together. Like, you know what I mean? Like, not that type of bro love, but you know what I mean? Like, we, we kumbaya on it. Athletes know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? That's, if y'all, I hope I ain't. Yeah, Male athletes. athletes. A lot of, listen, yeah. when I played sports, we had different showers. We were okay, not to get that. A little different. A little different. I'm just I guess. saying. Yeah, okay. Good, good, good clarification. <laughs> good clarification. But I mean, you, you grown, married, sexy. Y'all can take a shower together. Come on. Yeah, that's true, too. Come on, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> but. I'm just saying. We on the same team. And I think a lot of guys, we like, we, we, we thrive in that arena. When we know, even if there's an issue, we're on the same team. Okay. And when we don't sense that, and it happens time and time again, like, man, it's like she she met it to, to trade me in for another teammate. Not literally divorce anything, but like that. But the feeling of, like, having the, having a teammate, you know what, no matter what we're going through, no matter how many shots I miss, how many interceptions I throw, mm-hmm. we on the same team. I got your back. I miss a block or whatever have you, whatever sport now you want to use to it, that bad happened in practice, a game, yeah. we on the same team. Mm-hmm. And guys – often think in that realm of like, hey, is this is, is she on my team or is she on me? Is she making a personal attack on me or about the issue? And oftentimes the lines get blurred. Hmm. So then this is interesting because we don't often hear, because that what you just described was um, an area of male sensitivity. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I'm talking about the issue. You don't hear me talking about the issue. And in your lack of, and in my lack of communicating clearly, I'm talking about the issue and I'm getting more worked up because you're shutting down. It's almost like this really progressive frustration where we are kind of building a house that's bound to fall because I'm not communicating well because I'm upset. You're responding to me being upset versus what I'm upset about. Then you start to shut down or attack whatever it is. And then I have to counter. So we're going up this 
this thing that is really building a wall between the two of us. Yeah. So then for for this dialogue, um, and obviously, and I say this every show, we really do want to hear from you because this is closure is big. And of course, closure within a relationship, which I want to talk about in just a second, like a relationship that ends, um, but also closure within, you know, this this um, spousal relationship. Um, so please, if, if you've had situations like this, if, if you figured it all out, um, if you're still trying to, this is a community where we talk about this sort of thing. But um, I want to say this and I want to come back to it. If you're having challenges with closure from a previous relationship, um, you need to talk to somebody about that because you can have some um, and we talk about trauma and trauma is kind of a word now that's used a lot. But it's used a lot for good reason. Um, so if you are carrying something from an old relationship, um, something I didn't get closure um, from my mom or from my dad or from a sibling or from an ex, um, you can bring some of that baggage into your current relationship and you can start to um, try to identify things that aren't there. Like, oh, he used to do that or she used to do that. And then you can get yourself um, kind of worked up over something that doesn't necessarily exist in this relationship because you're looking for a closure outside. And there's a lot of things that you talk about in counseling. Um, if you have the opportunity to talk to somebody, uh, like if you if you're if a parent is still living, is still with us and you didn't get closure on something or if somebody's passed on or a relationship, that doesn't mean you have to revisit every person to get closure. There are certainly ways um, that you can get that without having to talk to that person. But that's going to be important as you bring those sorts of habits into your current relationship. But my question to you is then what do you do? Like, how can this be fixed? If we need closure in a relationship, we obviously get closure differently in our relationship. What's necessary for a male may not be the same thing that's necessary for the lady. What do we need to do so that we can come together? I would, I guess I have two things of advice. So for, if it's a man, right, in the idea that he's trying to understand his woman, he has to be just try to be less sensitive in a way that he can hear whenever there's an issue and don't be as, as sensitive to what the feedback is if he, he did something okay. wrong. So he has to be more sensitive to what's being said. I would say less sensitive. Because really what, less we, sensitive. what cause we are being sensitive to, we're taking it personal. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't take what you're saying personal. Mm -hmm. Some, most of y'all aren't trying to dog us out about an issue. Y'all trying to get to the bottom of it, mm -hmm. right? Y'all, as women, when you bring something up to us. Yeah. But on the flip side, I would say as, 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 a, as a wife, I'm talking to a wife, I would think that she needs to be understanding like, hey, make sure you understand we're on the same team. Even yeah. if there's an issue, see how, how serious it is or how little it is, whatever it is, that we're on the same team. I just want to just try to make sure we can, you know, we can move forward together. Yeah. And, and, and I don't want it to happen again. I want to make sure, you know, I didn't miss something, you didn't miss something. But, we, but, we're, but we're together in this. So he understands that and say, okay, in his mind, I That's think it's going to trigger something to say, hey, okay, I bet you he will talk about it more. Respond what, better. Because the one thing I bet you every woman may have heard, and I say every woman, a lot of women have heard men say, it ain't that serious. It ain't mm -hmm. that serious. That right there is a trigger point in your, in women's minds should be able to say, okay, he think we on two different teams. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to work on that because if that will make me immediately flamed out of my eyes. Yeah. I mean, we say So it. that's Let's interesting yeah. thing. Because I don't know that most women would see that that way. That would be some, like I talked about building that wall. If I'm talking about something that's serious to me and they say it's not serious, it immediately becomes something that is a point of contention. Well, typically we don't say it publicly because we know it'll flip y'all out. But trust and believe we're telling somebody else, like, man, I don't know why she's talking like that. Man, ain't that serious. Mm -hmm. we, in our other circles, mm -hmm. we are saying that. Okay. And he's probably responding that way just by not responding. Cause in his mind, it's like, it's not that serious. Mm. Can't believe she was, I just, I just went to the store and didn't tell nobody. I mean, what, what's wrong with that? It ain't that serious. People do leave the house without telling their significant other and go to the store and women come back mad. Why you didn't tell me? That's true. So anyway, we got to, we got to understanding. That's just on. understanding your spouse and what they need. Yeah. But some, there are two things that I wanted to point out and then I'm going to give you the last word. Um, in this dialogue, I think that not speaking when you're angry is is a big deal. 
Um, I think, and it doesn't mean shut down and just don't say anything. Tell them, I'm really upset. Give me a second. Or I'm going to come back to this conversation. Because I think not saying that um, and then either just spewing out or shutting down is really problematic. The second thing that I would say is um, making sure, to your point, and we've talked about this when we've counseled couples, is making sure that that issue is between you versus, I mean, is um, that it's on one side of you and you're both on the same side versus it being in between the two of you. Because I think that that is a point that a lot of people, we, we start seeing the, the um, enemy versus us and the issue. We are against the issue. Now we are fighting each other about this issue that is between the two of us. So let me give you the last word for this conversation about closure. No, I think you hit it. I think you hit it. I think, I mean, trying to be on the same side. We talked about the enemy being in the middle, but basically we're on the same side of the issue, mm -hmm. trying to get resolved. Men got to be more flexible, being more open. Women got to be more understanding, like, hey, don't try not to make it personal. You see, I'm taking it that way. Just try to flip that script and say, hey, you know, it's not about you. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it. Mm. Well, that's that. Thank you all for joining us. We appreciate it. Make sure that you connect with us online and on all our social media um, because we have more to say. This is a community. So let's talk about it. Like a true star.